origins of contemporary management thought. So, during this time, people have been shaping and reshaping organizations for many centuries. Looking back through the world history, we can trace the stories of people working together in formal organizations such as the Greek and Roman armies, the Roman Catholic Church, the East India Company, uh, the Hudson Bay Company, and others. So, People have also been writing about how to make organizations efficient and effective since long before terms such as management came into the common usage. Management organizations are product of their historical and social times around the world. So thus, we can understand the evolution of management theory in terms of how people have wrestled with matters of relationships at particular term of history. So here, during the early beginnings, we can track the concept of management from its development under the Sumerians. So the Sumerians provided the concept of writing and record keeping that allowed for an urban economic to develop. So which in lead to the establishment of these small businesses. And the Egyptians, um, they helped to pioneer the ideas of specialization of labor, um, the span of control, the hierarchy of command. And it was Sun Chu developed subdivisions, um, various ranking of authority and coordinations. Okay? So, the Greek Romans built forerunners of the modern corporations and guild. And after the Egyptians, here comes the Hammurabi in the 1800s. So, the Hammurabi or the Code of Hammurabi was a listing of 282 laws that regulated conduct on a wide variety of behaviors. This includes business dealings, um, personal behaviors, interpersonal relationships, punishment, and a wide variety of other outcomes. So, the Code of Hammurabi was a listing, okay? So, as per mentioned, um, it includes mga business dealings. And it, is, it consists of um, 104 law, okay, which is one of the first instances of accounting and of the need of formal rules for managers and owner. And also this code of Hammurabi, um, it says wages for doctors, mga bricklayers, mga stonemasons, boatmen, and others. And this include the incentive wages, okay, na a fixed amount uh, for wages to those mga um, employee, okay, ang mga laborers during that time. And of course, na na sila yung mga banking system as, pen, as per mentioned in my last discussion. Okay. So, these are the people who contributed the com com con contemporary management thought. Okay. So, Sancho, as per mentioned during the um, Greek times, okay, so Sancho uh, developed the subdivision, okay, the various ranking. So his major contribution is the need for the strategy, the careful planning, the careful organiz organizing and directing for the success in the war. And the great philosopher Socrates, okay, stressed the development of managerial skills such as creating an atmosphere of information, sharing and analysis okay so during the romans and uh, the contribution of socrates is the management of standardization because the roman need, need needed to administer a vast empire so they needed a standardization of measures weights and coins so, and also roman saw the birth of the corporation so in that in that um there were many roman companies sold stocks in the Public. So both Greece and Roman or Rome saw the continued pestilence of slavery, but due to economic changes that made slavery financially unfeasible, workers were gaining some degree of freedom. They still had masters who determined at what jobs they could work and how those jobs should be done. So after the collapse of the Roman Empire, here comes the other contributors. So Alexander the Great. So his ability to concept conceptualize 
anticipate and take risks was evident in his main victories. Okay? And he preserved in Sogdia and in the Markan and in the hostile regions with various climate. Okay? So, major contribution of Alexander the Great is he used of staff in the military organization. Okay? I'm sorry. And then the next one is Joklishan. So, Joklishan, um, his major contribution is he decentralized organization to govern the Roman Empire. So, he is the one who restored efficient government to the Roman Empire or to the empire after the nearly anarchy of the 3rd century. So, his the organizations of the fiscal, the administration, and military machinery of the empire lay the foundation of the Byzantine Empire in the east and temporarily shored up the decaying empire in the west. Okay? Another contributor is the Al-Farabi. So, Al-Farabi was a renowned and early Islamic ph philosopher. And also, he is a jurist who wrote in the field of political, philosophy, metaphysics, ethics, and logic. So, he was also a, a scientist, a cosmopologist, mathematician, and a music theorist. Okay, so his major contribution um, listed traits of a good leader. Another contributor is the Luca Pasciola. Okay, so Luca was the first person to publish detailed material on the double entry system of the accounting. So he was an Italian mathematician and Francis Franciscan friar who also collaborated with his friend Leonardo da Vinci. Okay. So, these are some of the contributors in the management of thought. Next one is the Francisco Di Marco. Okay? His contributor is all about the cost accounting. Okay? And then, so, Ranzo Fraterna, journal entries and ledgers. So, even before the, the, the even before, um, um, ledgers and journals has been created by these people, okay? Because they really need to log down all the information nga ilang gikinahalan. Since wala pa man sila nga time ang kanang uh, mga USB, mga disk, so dili nila i-mastore ang ilahang um, rules, mga information. So they really need to write it down in a form of journal or ledger. An another contributor is the Barbarigo um, his major contribution is the forms of business organization. Okay, so during those times, um, there there is already a an organization in the business. There is already a system, and it was Mr. Bar Barbarigo who contributed that one. And next is Niccolo Machiavelli. So his major contribution is the art of acquiring and power. Okay, so since during that time, um na amagi daghan nga mga philosopher na ay mga daghan nga mga dictatorship okay so um through that um Niccolo Machiavelli um contribute or discover the art of acquiring and power so how are you going to to acquire that certain power in in the form of management okay and the next is Adam Smith. So, Adam Smith, specialization and division of labor in manufacturing trade. So, um, during this time, there is already a specialization, okay, na na siya, um, categories in terms of work and division of labor, okay? So, there is already a division of labor. So, there is um, certain people who work na in the different um, type of work. Next is James Watt. So, um, his major contribution is the standard operating procedures, the, pal the planning, the wage incentives, and audit. Okay, so during this time, um, they have already audits. Okay, so the transactions are being monitored and there is already a process, a procedures, okay, in the operation. And then Henry Poor. Um, his major contribution is the principles of organization and communication applied to railroads. Okay, so along along the journey, along the years, people are are creating their own um, um, operations, procedures, and they have discovered um, through the mga experiences po nila and through their studies, of course. And the next one is Joseph Wharton. So Joseph Wharton established the first college course in business management. So here to summarize everything, um, 
as you can see, the early contributor on the left side under the outcomes, okay? So I want you to, to read that one for you to be able to know who are those major contributors in the contemporary management thought. Now let us go to the schools of management thought. Okay, so first here is the classical school. So before we will discuss the classical school, let us first understand what is the school of management thought. So the school of management thought, it is a theoretical framework for the study of management. So each of the school of management thought are based on somewhat different assumptions about human beings and the organization for which they work. Since the formal study of management began in the late 19th century, the study of management has progressed through several stages as scholars and practitioners working in different eras focus on what they believe to be important aspects of good management practice. And then over time, uh, management thinkers have sought ways to organize and classify the volum voluminous information about the management that has been collected and disseminated. Okay, And these attempts at classifications have resulted in the identification of the management schools. Okay, So, now, let us first discuss the classical school. So, classical school emphasizes on the managing workers and organizations more um, efficiently. So, classical school, um, this is the oldest formal school of management thought. Um, its root predated the 20th century. And the classical thought of school generally concerns way to manage work and organize more efficiently. Three areas of study can be grouped under the classical school are scientific management, administrative management, and bureaucratic management. Uh, when we say scientific management, um, it started in the 19th century where the management decisions often arbitrary and workers often work at an international intentionally slow pace. So there was a little in a way of systematic management and workers and management were often in conflict. So you just have to 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 um remember that scientific management um scientific management um it was introduced in an attempt to create a mental revolution in the workplace. Okay? So it can be defined as a systematic study of work methods in order to improve efficiency. While administrative management is um, basically to administer, diba? So, administrative management, um, it focuses on the management process and the principles of management. So, it is in contrast with the scientific management because um, um, an administrative management delays largely with jobs and work at the individual level of analysis and administrative management okay so administrative management also uh, provide a more general theory of the management and the major contributor of the administrative management is henry fail okay so in contrast siya sa scientific uh, management the third one is the bureaucratic management. So bureaucratic management focuses on the ideal form of the organization. So it was Max Weber who contributed this management. And based on observation, Weber concluded that may, man, many early organizations were inefficiently managed. So with a decision based on personal relationship and loyalty, he proposed that a form of organization called a bureaucracy should be characterized by division of labor, formalized rules, impersonality, and, and selection and promotion of employees based on ability would lead to more efficient management. Okay? So, mauna siya. So, you just have to remember that this management is under the classical school. And classical school is all about managing workers and organizations more efficiently. And when we say scientific uh, management, it is all about um, mental revolution in the workplace, okay? It is all about a systematic study of work methods in order to improve efficiency. While administrative management, um, it is all about the management process and principles of management. And 
bureaucratic management is focuses on the ideal formal organization. Okay, so remember that class. Next type of management school is the behavioral school. So behavioral school um, emphasizes the understanding human behavior in the organization. Okay, so the behavioral school of the management thought developed in part because perceived weakness in the assumptions of the classical school since they have seen that the management school which is the classical school is not that effective then they ought to to to, to discover another type of school so mo na siyang create ang behavioral school so while mo na siya so the classical school um emphasizes efficiency process and principles so some feel that this emphasis disregarded important aspects of the organization's life, particularly, particularly as it related to the human behavior. Thus, ang behavioral school nag-focus po siya o unsaon pagsabot, okay? How, how are you going to understand the factors that affect the human behavior? So through that, since behavioral school, since behavioral is all about human behavior, so, maupo na siya nga na under niya ang human relations and behavioral science. So, human relations, um, as a manager, uh, you should possess skills for diagnosing the causes of human behavior at work. Okay? Uh, you, should, you should possess um, interpersonal communication. You should motivate and leading workers. Muna siya ang focus sa human relation. Okay? And then, behavioral science. Um, behavioral science is a natural progression of the human management, okay, human relation movement. It focuses on applying conceptual and analytic tools to the problem of understanding and predicting behavior in a workplace. Okay, maona siya ang focus sa behavioral science. Another type of school management is the quantitative school. So, quantitative school uh, focuses on the improvement, improving the decision making via the application of quantitative techniques. Okay, so its roots can be traced back to the scientific management. So here, management science. Management science is also called uh, an operations uh, research. Okay. So, management science uses mathematical and statistical approach to solve management problems. And during the uh, World War II, uh, this strategy is being developed. Okay, na develop niya since they go they, they apply the scientific knowledge and methods in complex to the problems of war. Okay, so uh, management science has been created because um. They need to 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 find a strategy. Okay. Um. They need to apply scientific knowledge in complex to the problem ilang na face, which is a war. And then operations management. This is this emphasizes the productivity and quality of both manufacturing and services organization. So basically, ang major areas. Within the operation management is including the planning, mga facilities, mga locations, okay? Mauna siya, mga inventory, mga quality control, okay? So, mauna siya focus sa operations management. You just have to think operations, okay? That's the whole operation. Let's just say whole operations of the company. Okay, so, unsa man na siya. So, muna ito, mga quality control, mga inventory control, mga computer integrations. Okay, so, muna siya ang gaming sa operations management. And then, the third one is the management information system. So, MIS, in short, focuses on providing needed information <coughs> excuse me, to managers in a useful format and at a proper time. So, the decision support system attempt to integrate decision models, mga data, and decision makers into the system that supposed better, uh, supports better management decisions. So, basically, MIS, um, uh, it provides information to the manager that can be used, that can be used um, in his management um, style, okay? Yang ma-apply in his management um, operations. Another school of management um, thought is the system school. So, system school began to have a strong impact 
on management thought in the 1960s as a way of thinking about management technique that would allow managers to relate different special specialties and parts of the company to one another. This is also included by the external factor. So the system school um, focuses on the organization as a whole. So its interaction within the environment and it needs to achieve the equilibrium. So contingency school also focuses on applying the management principles and the process as dictated by the unique characteristics of its situation. So contingency school um, emphasizes that there is no one best way to manage and that it depends on the various situational factors such as the external environment, um, technology, organizations, and others. So in a classical viewpoint, um, it emphasizes on the finding ways to manage work more efficiently. And this leads to the scientific method. So the scientific method theory are, is part from the need to increase productivity. Okay, so part na siya. So, scientific uh, management held in a view of a man which emphasized the economic motivation. So, the development of infrastructure of the management so that the best method for performing each task could be determined. So, the scientific selection of workers so that so that each worker would be given responsibility for the task for which he or she was best suited. Okay, so mauna siya ang point sa scientific management. And the scientific education and development of the worker. Okay, so it was, the, it was Frederick W. Taylor who is the father of scientific management. And he advocate the peace rate system where workers were given incentives in the higher form of peace rate for producing above target output. Another contributor is the Henry Gant. Okay, so Henry Gant, um, an association tailors, and he is an American mechanical engineering and a management consultant graduated in a John Hopkins University. So, basically, Henry Gunt created the Gunt chart, which is a bar graph that measures planned and complete work along stage or production by time. So, um, Gunt worked along with Foyer, okay, and uh, he abandoned the differential rate system having too little motivations, okay? Since um, there's already differential system created by other contributors, so he abandoned that and created the Gantt chart because he sees that um, using this chart, um, it is very effective, especially in planning. And through planning, uh, you'll be able to complete your work along the way. Next is Frank Delbert, okay? So these two, this, this, this two is um, Gilbert and Gillian is a husband and wife. So they are a couple and they have also contributed in the theory of management thought. Okay, so the uh, Frank Gilbert, um, he is a pioneer time and motion study and arrive at many of his management techniques independent of Taylor. So he stressed efficiency and was known for his quest for the best way to do work. Okay, while Lillian... Um, she is more interested in the human aspect of work, okay? She pioneered in the field of industrial psychology and made substantial contribution to human resource management. Next is the bureaucratic management. So, uh, bureaucratic management emphasizes the management on impersonal, rational basis through such elements as clearly defined authority and responsibility. And it was... Um, Max Weber, who is the creator of the bureaucratic management. So, he identified these six characteristics. So, division of labor, um, which clearly definition of authority and responsibility. Okay, so na siya system, na siya organizations. Okay, 
um, um, here. Um, it has already been identified who are those top level management, the middle management, and then the lower management. And then second, positions organized in a hierarchy of authority. Okay, manato siya ako ang And then managers subjects to rules and procedures that will ensure reliable and predictable behavior. And then another one, management separate from the ownership of the organization. And then administrative acts and decisions recorded in writing, and then personal selected and promote based on technical qualifications. And the next is the administrative management. So when we say administrative management, this focuses on the whole organization rather than the individual worker, delineating the management functions of planning, organizing, commanding, coordinating, and controlling. And it was Henry Fay Fayol who created the administrative management. So he identified these 14 principles. So again, division of labor, the authority, the discipline, the unity of command, the unity of direction, uh, subordination of individual, and the rest. So this, this 14 principles of management um, created by Henry Fayol is very important in a management. Okay, uh, These are the things that he sees that would work out in a management system. Next is Mary Parker Foley. So uh, Mary Parker Foley, um, he, uh, she is the mother of system theory or the modern management. So um, she emphasizes unity, uniformity. Okay, um, she said that do not try to control people, control the situation together. Okay, so mo na siya ang um, center or mo na ang point sa management style ni Miss Mary Parker Foley. Next is Sir Chester A. Barnard. So he has contributed to the acceptance theory of authority, which states that. People have free will and can choose whether to follow the management orders or not. Okay, so um, he emphasizes that um, the employee or the people under the management has a freedom to choose, okay, whether he or she accepted the command from the higher management. So that is what Chester Barnard emphasizes. In the humanistic perspective, which is um, Created by Marker, Mary Parker Foley and Chester Barnard. Um, this aims to create a more balanced relationship between those um, things that can be exchanged on markets and those that are not, are not but make life worthwhile. Like mga dignity, mga well-being. Okay, mo na siya ang gimin sa humanistic perspective. Okay? So, human relations movement. So, human relations movement... Um, is frequently used as a general term to describe the way the ways in which manage, managers interact with their employees when employee management stimulates more and and better work the organization has effective human relations when moral and efficiency deteriorate its human relations are said to be an effect Okay, so that's how human relations uh, movement work. Okay, so the human relations movement arose is a formally attempt to systematically discover the social and psychological factors that would create effective human uh, relations. So the Hawthorne experiment, okay, which is the human relations movement, grew out of the Of the electric company okay so it is the Hawthorne's experiment okay money siya ang electric company um hotter experiment is is created and discovered through the western electric company hey sorry um elton mayo and fritz okay so Mayo, here in the first um, picture, he is the father of HRN. So, Mayo viewed the increase of productivity 
as observed in the experiment, is mainly a response of the workers to the psychological, not the physical environment and the experimental situation. And then, while Fritz argued the social and psychological factors, potential important variables in improving work performance than the work methods and other physical factor in the work environment. Okay, so both viewed the psychological factors as a way of, of improving work performance by the employees. Human resource perspective. So when we say human per resource perspective, it is a management perspective that suggests jobs should be designed to meet the higher level needs by allowing workers to use their full potential. So here, um, the management used the, the human resource perspective or the employee's perspective to identify or how they are going to meet um, and also allow those workers to use their full potential. So here, the, the employees have the, a freedom, okay? They have the freedom to, to use their full potential, potential in doing their job, okay? So, dili na nila kailangan nga mo ask of permission to the management. As long as they are just following the rules and regulation imposed by the man management, then there is no problem. Next is Abraham Maslow. So, he is the fa father of the humanistic psychology. So, um, the work of Abraham Maslow is on the industrial psychology. And he imposed the different um, level of needs by the human. Okay, so Maslow work is frequently evoked in attempts to explain and predict work behavior. So basically, um, Abraham Maslow's advocate the euphysician, meaning moving towards psychological health or self-actualization. So his management is an ideal model for industrial organization. So Maslow took a keen interest in the application of humanistic psychology beyond one-on-one -on -one therapy to larger endeavors, organizations, and education. Okay, so his aim is those um, management will have a self-actualization. They will come to the point nga mo abot gisila sa pinakatap, and they are going to to. To see to it nga na ano sila self-actualization, they they, they, the, the people are able to achieve their full potential, including the creative activities. Next is um, the theory X and theory Y. So this is um, conceptualized by Douglas MacGregor. So the concept of theory X and theory Y was developed by the social psychologist Douglas MacGregor. So it, it describes two contrasting sets of assumptions that managers make about their people. Like for example, the theory X. Okay, people dislike work having little ambitions and are unwilling to take responsibility. So Managers with these assumptions motivate their people using a rigid or mag mag motivate sila through a reward, mga inana. And while theory why, these are the people who are self-motivated and enjoy the challenge of work. So the managers with these assumptions have a more collaborative relationship with these people and motivate them by allowing them to work on their own initiative and giving them responsibility and empowering them to make decision so that's the difference so theory x these are the negative people mone sila ang mga, mga people na kailangan ni encourage okay so as a manager as as part of your management so you're going to have a reward system so that they can be motivated while theory y these are the people who really who are very achievable kailang kung sila very very eager to do their job okay so as a management you don't you don't really have to to to, to say to them nga grabe kay ka eager kay ka so dili na mo kailangan isulti but you will work with them okay you will work with them and and of and also uh you're going to have a collaborative relationship 
Uh, next is behavioral science approach. So behavioral science approach, this relies on the scientific research for developing theories about human behavior. So this is also about human behavior. Um, we're going to identify um, what are those uh, behavior interpreted. So uh, interpret ang mga behaviors. And this discipline includes psychology, sociology, anthropology, and economics. So, how people react if taas ang price, how people react if the supply and demand, mga ingana. So, that's how the behavioral science approach work. Next is, in a quantitative view, um, this is an application of management techniques, na siya statistics, na siya computer, na siya mga simulations, na siya figure, na siya status, or statistics, I mean. Okay? So, that's the quote quantitative view. So, in a management science, uh, it focuses on the using of mathematics, okay, to aid the problem solving and decision making. So, naagi siya problem solving, na siya statistics, na siya data, okay, as a basis for your problem solving and for your decision making. And then, operations management focuses on managing the production, the delivery of the organization, the products and the services more efficiently. A management science. So, a management perspective, it emerged in the World War II and applied mathematics, statistics, and other quantitative techniques to managerial problems. Okay? So, in the beginning of World War II, uh, Great Britain desperately needed to solve a number of new complex problems in warfare. So, with the survival... Um, with their survival survival at stake, British formed the first operational research teams by pulling the expertise mathematicians, uh, psychologists, or physicists, and other doctors. Okay? So, mo na siya. Since more on war man sila, naman sila kailangan isolve na problem. So, mo na siya nga. Um, management science has been created. And then, under the management science is the operations um, research. So, operations research, um, it grew directly out of the worldwide group. So, it consists of the mathematician building, mga models, mga applications, um, mga quantitative techniques. And then, operations management um, refers to the field of management. Uh, excuse me. It, if, it specializes the physical production of goods and services. So, Operations research basically um these are the steps, the procedures. Ano makakam up sila like operations management. Okay? So research more on data, more on um gathering data, and then operations management is more on the application na. Uh, next is the information uh, information technology. So the information technology, um, it is a management science pers perspective, which is often reflected in management information system, where these systems are designed to provide relevant information to managers in a timely and cost efficient manner. So um, information technology is a system in which all of the data has been stored, and if someone wanted to know something about the system or the management so they just have to open it okay so they just have to search on it so that they'll be able to know okay makita nilang information nilang gikinahang lang so what is mis so at mis or management information system uh, it is a system that provides information needed to manage organization effectively uh, primarily resources is the technology the information and the people so, recent historical trend. So, first is the system thinking theory. So, system approach uh, is to manage views the organizations as unified, purposely system composed, composed interrelated parts. Okay, so this approach gives managers a way of look, look, looking at the organization as a whole and a part of the larger environment, which is the external environment. Okay? So, mona siya ang system thinking theory. The basic systems theory. 
So, inputs. Okay, what are those inputs? So, example, mga raw materials, mga human, mga financial, mga informations. So, mo na siya ang inputs. And then, after the inputs, it's going to the transformation process. Okay, so the management use of production technology to change the inputs to outputs. Like, ang example, ano niya is mga management activities, ang mga operations, mo na siya example. And then, after the transformation, it goes down to the outputs. So, it includes the organization's product and services, the financial re reports, the human results. So, na ano siya data. And after the outputs, feedbacking na. So, feedbacking, this is feedback, this is the knowledge of the results that influence the selection of the inputs during the next cycle of the process. So, here, in feedback, uh, you'll be able to know kung um, dami kailangan i-adjust, um, on sa mga opinions of the other people around. Okay, so if kailangan siya, i kailangan siya nga i-revise, then it could, if majority will agree to the revision, then definitely it will be revised. And then the environment. So this includes the um, social, the political, and the economic forces, which is the external factor environment. In contingency view, um, this means that the manager's response depends on identifying key contingencies in an organizational situation. It tells at what works in one setting might not work in another. Okay, so contingency view uh, will not just accept um, only one strategy. Okay, na siya different. Okay, so um, there is an acceptance if that um, if that system or that approach might not work to you but it will work to another so that's how a contingency view um look then tqm or the total quality management so total quality management system this is a philosophy or an approach to management that focuses on managing the entire um, organization okay um, entire organization and how to deliver the quality goods and services to the customers. So, this approach to management was implemented in Japan after the World War II and was a major factor in their economic renaissance. So, TQM has at least four major elements. So, first is the employee involvement. So, requires company-wide participation in quality control. So, it is very important that the employee is involved in the process since they are the one who really provide the services. So, sila good mismo ang kaibaw, uh, kaibaw on how to, to approach, how on sa mga strategy. So, it is very important that people are involved. Then, next is focus on customers. So, companies must find what customers want and meet their needs. So, customer focus means the organizations must attempt to determine those customers needs and wants and deliver products and services that addresses them okay so as a as part of the management you'll be able to you're going to find out kung unsa ang mga wants sa customer and after finding out unsa to ang ilang want then you're going to meet unsa ang ilang gikinahanlan diba so part na siya sa um, marketing strategy part na siya sa process sa usa ka organizations or sa usa ka business and then benchmarking. So benchmarking, whereby companies find out how others do something better that they do and try to meet their needs and expectations. So you have to also have a an information how other companies work. Okay, um, how uh, what other companies um approach? Unsa ilang approach um towards sa pag pag implement nila ang mga business pag 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 propose and ang business so you have also to do benchmarking so that you have the information makibaka kung sa information sa imuhang competitor okay and the last one is the continuous improvement so a continuous improvement this is the implication of small incremental improvements in all areas of the organization on an ongoing basis so even if um a lot of challenges is mamit sa osaka organization um it is very important that still you're going to improve, okay? You will learn from the experience, okay? And in learning from that experience, um, you will learn, okay? And you will be improved and there's a success in your management um, style.
Okay, so that is all about for our discussion. So I hope that you really learn. And if you have um, clarifications, don't hesitate to contact me. Okay, so those are the history of management class. So everything uh, ako gipang sulti nga tao, um, they have a big contributions of what we have today. Okay, so don't forget those people. And then if wala gid mo nakasabot um a pdf file is has been is being uploaded to the vsu ee naman sad and also um feel free to ask questions okay so thank you for your hospitality and also for lis listening to our um discussion